Okay, I know a lot of people are not interested probably in hearing this video, and I'm just doing it because I don't want to keep thinking about it with, you know. Um, but I want to talk about fake Sagan. Um, as I said a couple times, you know, I had a lot of hope in fake Sagan's intellectual potential. And in true human fashion, um, I'm not entirely giving up on that. I think he does have the potential. He has the elements. He's smart, uh, well-read enough, has enough good ideas to follow through to some good conclusions. But he's totally failing on this. Um, he's totally failing on this. And I think it's a good case study of what goes on in the internet, what goes on with internet fame, what goes on with pwnage and drama and trolling and flame wars uh, in all of those kinds of situations. I mean, uh, I had thought that Fake Sagan was able to keep separate his hobby of pwnage from actual intellectual discourse, that he knew the difference. It's like if some brilliant scientist comes on, uh, if some brilliant scientist wants to uh, uh, mud wrestle, you know, you don't look at them and go, well, why aren't you solving, you know, differential equations, Einstein? You know, it's like, because I spent all day doing that, I'm here to wrestle in the mud. Fine, but they do have to keep it separate. They have, they can't mistake uh, wrestling in the mud for their scientific achievements. They can't take their mud wrestling techniques and apply it to science. You know, they will have to keep this separate if they're just having some sort of a cathartic, you know, experience. Wrestling in the mud. Um, but there is a danger there because these kinds of things combined with the peculiarities of internet fame, low wattage internet fame, um, you know, create some personal risks that I think we have seen fake Sagan succumb to. Uh, he's, uh, for example, you know, one reason I have this confidence in him is his nonconformity, and I believed in that nonconformity. Um, now I do have to question that because, uh, you know, he, uh, he said in his video asking for questions that he'll block anybody that disagrees with him just for disagreeing with him, and that's not going to change. Um, does that sound like a nonconformist? Plus, he talks about, and this really bugs me, the number of subscribers people have all the time. You know, he said, oh, when you go up against somebody with more subscribers, you're going to lose that battle, but I'm going to do it because I'm... I don't believe that. I don't believe he ever used the number of people in someone's audience um, as the judge of who won a ponage contest. I think he based it on the facts and the actual argument and how the other person reacted. I mean, it's, it is fake for, for him to claim that. And it's also not very coherent with a nonconformist ideology. Counting how many people someone has in their audience, um, then Bill O'Reilly beats you without even trying. Is that what you believe? Uh, and also, it's pathetic. I mean, I don't, you could have 40,000 subscriptions, and it's pathetic to put too much weight in that. First of all, I think it's funny how people count their subscrip subscribers as fans. I mean, I would be subscribed to fake Sagan right now if I wasn't blocked. And uh, he would be counting me as like some legion of people backing up his voice. No, I just want to watch his videos. I mean, you can, do you, all of you guys only subscribe to people that you're big fans of? You don't subscribe to people who maybe are have your opposite of your opinion, but you like the topic, so you want to know when they bring it up or what they have to say. Um, internet celebrity is really pathetic. It goes to people's heads just so much. And, uh, and yet you, you can't even make a living off of it, yet it has all the emotional risks involved with fame, just, just affecting your ego. And calling people heavy hitters or not based on the number of subscription they have just doesn't make sense. I mean, if they're performers and they're on here to start a performing career as an actor or something, fine, yeah, it matters. That's going to be the determining factor of if they can make a living. But for conversations, even, even lowbrow intellectual conversations, but if they're intellectual of, of any level, you're a heavy hitter based on the people that have decided they'll let your video icons come up in their subscriptions window. The thing about Ponage too is that I think he's fallen prey to, to the problem with Ponage and the issue of not keeping the Ponage separate. 
by not keeping it separate, by trying to go use his ponage style on, for example, Christopher Seven, he um, he is he's fallen for the, for the trap. The, the trap is that in those kinds of battles, the way you win them is you don't give a damn. I mean, if you're ugly, you know you're ugly. If you're fat, you know you, you don't care what the people say. You know, if somebody called the boring dispatcher fat, he knew that already. And even if he cared, even if he wanted to become more healthy, that was a personal thing for him. He wasn't going to let you in on that and push his buttons with it. And you would end up looking like an idiot for stating the obvious rather than him looking like an idiot for being overweight. You know, and it's, this is what's happened with fake Sagan. I mean, he had no girlfriend. He wasn't interested in dating. He made videos about that, um, justifying that, explaining how he didn't like the dating scene and what he thought was wrong with it and just where he was in his life. And then later on, in different drama, you know, after he's got a girlfriend uh, from PMs that were released by people, you know, we see that he's trying to throw this in somebody else's face. Like, well, I win anyway because I'm getting laid and you're not. See, so the problem is hypocrisy because with ponage and drama and flame war winning on the internet of the non-intellectual capacity type kind they or, or very low they you know it's it's like you throw whatever you have at people because it's not that you care about if they have a girlfriend or if they're overweight or any of that you're just trying to push their buttons and get an emotional response you're trying to manipulate their emotions so this is a danger, becoming a hypocrite. Now, if you have no intellectual capacity, it's almost not even like hypocrisy, because the fact is you just don't care about any of that stuff. So you're, you're kind of lying when you say you do care, but it's, not, it's almost not hypocrisy, because the truth would have been that you just didn't care one way or the other. And, um, but if you have some intellectual capacity, this is a problem. Being able to ignore your own hypocrisy, being able to be apathetic against any accusation thrown your way, means that when somebody points out something to you that about yourself that isn't coherent with your principles that you put forward, you can't hear that. I mean, I for one am here to hear that. I t try to tell my ideas straightforward, including the weaknesses, and people come back with their criticisms, and I want that. You know, I don't want to beat the criticism, I want to hear it, and I'll argue against it, or I'll take it into account, or whatever I have to, to honestly take that fact in that idea in. And, you know, I could be apathetic about what all y'all care on the internet, but why would I even come in the first place? So, I, I think, um, I think he's, he's a huge failure as a nonconformist. Uh, now he also says, this is a typical internet thing, of he wants to use his channel, you know, for good. But, again, he wants to talk about the class war, about abuses by the state, in terms of manipulation. He just wants to manipulate his, his, his listeners. And what a group of listeners it is, he has to lecture them on it being okay to disagree with a black person. So he's, he's, he's trimmed that garden so that now he's got 5,000 people that have to be lectured on something like that, and he wants to do something good with those people, with the ear of those people. And it's laughable, and it's, it's pathetic. You know, and, um, you know, don't let fame go to your head in any case, but certainly not this low watt internet fame. It's really pathetic. It looks pathetic. And, you know, when you do that kind of thing, you're just conceding defeat to the Bill O'Reilly's of the world before you even, even talk to them. And um, this is a people's medium. We're discussing things with other human beings, not with these wannabe stars and starlets, you know. So just go, you know, become a performer and an actor, count the number of people willing to pay for your stuff and be proud that you can make a living off that. If you want to have a dialogue about something, then just come and have a dialogue about something and, you know, save all the pathetic bullshit. That's my advice.